Uh, I'm here with the, uh, the famous uh, Captain Sig Hansen of the Northwestern. We, we all know you from TV and your uh, fishery, fisheries out in the tough waters of uh, Alaska. But you forgot to say the good looking Captain Sig from uh, uh, I apologize. No? Uh, I, your lawyers will talk to my lawyers about that. <laughs> but welcome to Trondheim. Yep. Uh, it's uh, good to have you here. And of course, you are of um, Nord uh, Norwegian heritage. Your father from Karmøy. Ja, både mor og far. Uh, ja. Mor mi og far mi er fra Karmøy, yes. Hvordan har du klart å holde så godt på Karmøy-dialekter da? Snakk til deg hjemme. I'm going to tell you a story. Ja. Så når jeg var i første dag i skolen, første klasse, så fikk jeg, uh, I got a note from the teacher. Ja. Og så, og så skrev jeg, uh, hey, uh, Mrs. Hansen, det var mor mi, så you need to speak English in the house. Ah. Norwegian was my first language. So if I could be sure that no more to bara snacka engelsk, you know, meant to be America. Yeah. So blade there. So that meant meant the value. It was. Um, pardon me for speaking Norwegian. It's so interesting to hear about uh, your uh, uh, Norwegian language while living in Seattle. But it's a huge Norwegian community there. Very big. And uh, even like in Ballard, we have, uh, you know, like for Sittnamai, for example. Yeah. I don't know. Tempton, she would do some months ago, Bagged in Paraden, right? Yeah. So it's a very big community. So all of those people communicate together and they speak Norwegian and they live, you know, as a community. Yeah, so, yeah you see these subcultures many places yeah. in the world, like it's in very nice. Chinatown. But yeah. in Seattle, it's uh, Karmai Town. Norwegian, <laughs> Karmai Town. <laughs> Karmai Town. But, uh, so you had really, um, coming from a Norwegian fisheries family for generations, there was yeah. no choice for you in, in picking your occupation. Well, uh, my grandmother, uh, who is uh, so a so the big Pesandana, the football barn, that's where the beach is in Okra. Yeah. So she wanted me to be a preacher. So she said, Yeah, man, you should be a priest too. That was her dream for me. Because you were so persuasive. I'm such a nice person. <laughs> and I said, I don't want to be a preacher. I want to be a fisherman. Yeah. And so uh, I promised her, I said, well, maybe someday I'll be a preacher, you know. But now I'm preaching. Now you're actually preaching sustainable uh, fisheries. Exactly. And you're doing that uh, together with Helge here. So I kept my promise yeah. to my grandmother. Yeah. And I did my job. And now we're here and we are preaching sustainability for the next generation. Yeah, you're a much nicer person than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, tell me, Helge, uh, what are you um, hoping to accomplish with working with uh, SIG and, and also working with sustainable fisheries? Yeah, there, there's a huge problem with loss of fishing gear and he's, uh, he, he can talk to that. But uh, around 10% of all fishing gear is lost to sea every year. And of course, this is a huge problem in terms of ghost fishing, in terms of, uh, of uh, plastic pollution and everything. So we've developed a backup buoy. So when you lose your gear, then after a set amount of days, so you can program with an app, a backup buoy floats to the surface and you can now retrieve your lost fishing gear. So this wow. kind of breaks that cycle of perpetual... That's a genius. It's yes. the only company on planet Earth that has this technology, number one. So but, I'm telling you right now. Because you have all these cages I've seen on TV, Well, right? he chased me down for uh, about a year. And, uh, you know, had this been uh, 10, 15 years ago, I wouldn't believe in it. But now I do because it's a new world. And you, uh, have you experienced them previously that you lost a lot of, lot of these cages? I've lost more pots than you can ever imagine. And now with this system, which sounds like it's almost like the little thing that Apple makes that you put in your luggage. Yeah, almost. Yeah, only bigger. Only bigger. <laughs> yeah, you need, you need more size. And, and what are you hoping to, to achieve with this? Well, it's, it's to reduce the amount of, of, uh, of uh, pollution and, of course, for the fishermen too, the, the cost, the replacement cost for, for, uh, to buy new gear all the time. So, so, we, we are, so it's a win-win. It's a win-win for everybody. For me, if I buy one uh, crab pot yeah. today, you know, back in the day in the 80s, I would pay three, four hundred dollars. Today, I'm paying 16, 18, almost two thousand dollars. For one pot. They're cheaper to some corner for it here now. They're cheaper to some. I'm a tank porter. Yeah, huh? do the math. Yeah. Son? So, 
Uh, and this technology the rescue, is unique. It, 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 is, it does cost money, but the money you save when you lose all these pots, it comes back to you. Yeah. And it does help the environment. So that's the whole idea. It's a great idea. And uh -huh. you're hoping that uh, you'll meet some interesting fishermen here and persuade them to take better care of their gear yeah. in this manner. Exactly. And we have a discussion tonight on, uh, on a stage somewhere, yep. discussing our solution with, uh, with Sintef and with uh, actually uh, Minister of Fisheries from Canada joining on video link. Yeah, yeah and so it's a good uh, thing you yeah. came. Are you, are you going uh, through Karmai on the way back? <laughs> to get the Kanuta Pulsa with Rubelevace. I wish you a wonderful stay in Tornheim and yeah. I'm really impressed by the technology and, and Sig was a much nicer guy than I thought. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> good luck.